Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining in for our podcast, Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Al Dacascos. Just like every Thursday, we post Ask Sifu Al questions. And the questions for today, which I'm going to be asking Sunny Papuaya from Canada, is going to be asking what's his opinion when it comes to kids having black belts. I know everybody has their opinion. I mean, some system even is crazy enough to have second, third, fourth, fifth degree black belts at the age of as early as 25 or younger. So I don't know what that is all about. But again, in my opinion, I don't think it's right, but at the same time, we're going to get that answer from Sifu Al, the man himself. But we also have two special guests who's going to be answering that question as well. So before we get to the man, don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever it's, you know, at. Hit the notification, like this podcast so that this way, you know, you'll get notified when Sifu Al answers those next questions you could say that you send in. And if you comment below and write your question, we'll make sure that Sifu Al answers those questions. Again, the floor is yours, Sifu Al. Thank you for joining us. We've had great pleasures doing it all over the world and doing this podcast, which we, has reached hundreds. And, and um, we're privileged to be talking about subjects that some of you are very on the edge of talking about, sometimes not even want to talk about. But before we get that, I have two special guests that's coming on that is doing something that is like an extravaganza. I don't know much about it, but I'm going to allow these two people to come on and explain it to you. One is, I don't know what to call you, a professor, grandmaster, or, or what? Paul Shivanti, Shivisi. Is that right, Paul? You did great. Great, Sifu. Thank you. Uh, Okay. And the other one is Bobby Link. Okay. So Uh I'd like to have both of these guys on over here, and then we can begin to start getting on with our dialogue. I apologize, uh, Paul, when I begin to say your last name. I am not in Italian. I have to speak (laughs) Filipino or Hawaiian. (laughs) <laughs> See, boy, it's fantastic. It's 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 a very uh, it's not an easy name to pronounce, and there's so many different dialects of pronunciation. You did fantastic. All right, thank you. Anyway, the um, I want you guys to talk about. I, I see that you have this post in the back of you, you know, on your karate. But I also have this that was sent to me by Bobby Lynn, and. Uh, so many questions come up about it. Can you, my, one of the questions I have for the both of you is what inspired you to do an extravaganza like this? Um, I'll, I can start out basically giving you some information regarding where this passion of mine came from. So being a multi martial arts school owner, I've always had, the vision of event planning for my own students. And whether that be tournaments or a banquet, ceremony, awards, whatever it may be, to bring bring our students together as a family, so to speak, as you certainly understand, Sifu. And what ended up happening is a lot of my friends in the martial arts all over the country had had noticed, have heard about, have seen, you know, with the advent of social media, had seen pictures and things like that. And throughout, throughout the years, have asked whether or not they could attend and be part of the event or events that we were having. So it, it basically started as a grassroots campaign, so to speak, to encourage and honor and respect the individual students of Savizi's martial arts, then grew into other folks, other friends, other martial artists, 
other people around the United States and the world um, asking if they could take part in it. So it grew. It grew not just from my own students, which are a huge part of it, my staff, which is second to none, um, but other folks coming in with their students to compete, to be honored, to gather, to meet other people from different styles and systems, all uniting into one weekend. So we call it now the Extravaganza Weekend. And the great staff that I have and Bobby Lynn uh, spearheading this with myself, we have a big event coming up next March of 2022, which unfortunately had to be postponed on two occasions due to the pandemic. So we're really excited about it. We hope that um, uh, folks like yourself um, and, and others uh, can take part in, in some way, shape or form to be able to add, like you said before this show started, it's about asking questions and sharing knowledge. That's basically what it is. How are you and Bobby connected? <laughs> I'll let him answer that one. Greetings, everybody. Sifu, thank you for having us. Sifu Pavoya, thank you for having me as well. I just retired 33 years in law enforcement. I was a police sergeant on the midnight shift, and I, I had my non-commercial school running concurrently throughout whenever I could do it. Um, Paul and I have been friends for 40, 45 plus years. He gave me a call one day. He says, what are you doing? I said, nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> so he says, you need to come over to my team. I said, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So I came over. I looked at all his, his total of five schools all around in the North Shore area of Massachusetts. And I'm looking at all the schools. And I sit back and I watch. And you know, I'm a good observer. And you know, see for as you know, I'm a big talker. So when I don't talk, people start worrying. They're like, why isn't he saying it? I'm looking at all the schools and the instructors, and they're seamless. They were phenomenal. They they promote the arts in a positive way. They they secure the the sanctity of the the don the black belt as as we talked earlier, and it was just a great fit. The people were positive, and I said, you know what, I'm coming over. So about six months, seven months ago, before even before I retired, I joined Savisi's Martial Arts. And it's been the best move of my life. Paul and I have seen most of it. Bottom line, when this all crumbles and blows up, me and him will still be friends for life. And that's what's so special about it, because he knows I have his best interest, and he has my best interest. And my passion in the martial arts is, is, is humongous. I want people to see what I've seen elsewhere. And, I mean, I remember back when I was a teenager, reading Black Bell Magazine about you, Sipo, and everyone else, and now here we are friends, and it's just, it's mind-blowing. It, the passion I have is beyond a reproach, and here we go. Wow, <clears throat> that's great. It seems as though you guys got a lot of things going on. You have the award banquet, and you got the black belt recognition, and the spring tournament during the weekend. What, you're starting off on the 20th, let's see, the 26th, no, the 25th. What's happening on the 25th? On the 25th, Tifu is basically a meet and greet. So we have people that are flying in from all over the country and are coming into the, to the Boston area on that Friday and checking in in the hotel. So we're going to have a nice meet and greet for folks like, um, you know, we have some special guests coming in, uh, uh, Kathy Long, uh, five-time world kickboxing champion, senior grandmaster, George Lim, who you know very well, um, uh, coming in from Arizona. Um, and we have folks coming in, like I said, from all over the country and, and hopefully from Canada as well. So we're going to have a nice meet and greet, introduce everybody, share some ideas uh, before the big weekend starts on uh, that Saturday morning. Um, which is the 26th, which you alluded to moments ago, which will be our day of seminars, um, which is going to be a fantastic day um, featuring top martial artists, again, um, some of whom I just mentioned. This is going to be taking place at the Hilton Boston Woburn, just outside of Boston, um, in a fantastic venue, has literally something for everyone and we want it to be a family event too to have people bring their children extended family members and whatnot 
It's a great facility. Bobby and I have been there several times uh, from swimming pools to business centers to different restaurants and what have you. It's going to be fantastic, Seafood. Fantastic. Now you have uh, on the 27th, you got the what, the tournament? So uh, the 27th is the tournament, but that evening on the 26th, we have a Grand Masters gathering. We're gonna to bring together people, and Bobby, please chime in too. We're gonna to bring in people that are attending from, from all over our initial, and Bobby can speak to this because they were very, very close, but uh, we were having uh, Henry Cahoa, uh, who sadly passed away recently, who um, you know very well. Right. Uh, was so excited to come and we've been speaking all along for the past year or so when he was bringing his his friends and partners and in the martial arts and this was going to be a big uh, a Hawaiian tribute so to speak to the heritage <laughs> and sadly and tragically he passed away but we're going to carry on that we're going to carry on his wishes. We're going to have a Hawaiian theme. So everybody's going to be dressed up uh, in a Hawaiian gab. And hopefully with other people like yourself, hopefully, and senior grandmaster George Lim, we will we will be able to to share the, the history of Kaju Kembo and the impact that it has had on people's lives uh, here in, in the Boston area and all over the world. Bobby, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I... I... When I first met Ayo, Professor Kola, uh, we instantly hit it off. We talked every week. We did FaceTime every week. We talked from anything from music, because I'm involved in music. I was involved in law enforcement, as he was. So he sort of said, hey, bro, we do the same things. I said, I know. <laughs> so we used to laugh all the time all, with regard to all that. And he was our featured teacher. He was going to do the whole the shaka, he was going to do everything. He was going to do the seminar with the, his Al Palau Kaiser Kempo version. He was going to do the banquet and all this. And then, of course, tragically he passed away, which I'm still shaking my head over. He left quite an impact on me in a very short time. We were very good friends, and I'll miss him terribly. But I want to honor his legacy. So we have a little video tribute that we're going to have. Right now, a lot of the Hawaiians... A lot of his team, his boys, so to speak, are on the fence about wanting to come now because they don't want to make him look bad. And they're very strict about that. So I said, listen, you coming would be representing Io and would be in, 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 the, in the best interest, obviously, as you would do, to share your knowledge and your history. But I'm not going to force them. I hope they'll come. We've been, uh, Paul and I have been very, so Paul and I have been very, in tune with uh, George Lynn. So he's kind of helping us maybe drag, you know, get them involved with what, what we're doing, even though Iowa has passed. But nevertheless, as, as Sophie Paul said, we're going to carry on that legacy. We're going to present the, the banquet and everything else that goes on in honor of Iowa. I know that this is going to be a real, real success for you folks. With we're a lot real of talent coming in, I think that is going to be something like a booster to a lot of the people to know that there is organizations out there that is looking out for the welfare of the students, start, starting from the very top. And as leaders, you guys are doing a real good job on it. Now we get into another subject because you folks are involved actively into the martial arts. And that is the question that Sonny asked. Yes, Sifu. The question is, when it comes down to it, Sifu, is that... People are asking, should kids get their black belts at the age of, I don't know, seven, eight, maybe even as young as five years old? And then also, it's like, it's crazy, but you get in some system where they have high ranking black belts below the age of 25 who are ranking third, fourth, or fifth degree black belts before the age of 25. To tell you the truth, in my opinion, I don't think that should be because they haven't had enough life experience. They haven't had enough training or maturity or, you know, just, yeah, they might be faster and stronger, but at the same time, they still haven't really learned 
what needs to be learned. So now, you know, like, especially for yourself, they haven't learned straight from the source or even for this event that's happening in Boston, where you're going to have some great grand masters coming in to share and pour their knowledge for all the people who are wanting to learn and gain more experience from people who've already done it. It's going to be a great thing. So now, Sifu, give us your opinion, as well as yep. the our other two guests, of course. Hey, we'll start off with Paul. Paul, you, you go ahead and start off. I want to see what your answer is going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's a very complex question with with multiple layers um, in in that are incorporated inside the question. So to start off, absolutely agree with Sifu Sunny. Black belt is 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 to me personally held in the highest of steam, revered both personally and professionally, and should not be uh, should not be minimized in any way, shape, or form. Whether it be giving out rank for for money, which we've seen for, for, from different uh, folks being on topics about, or having the person not be adequately be able to do the particular techniques of a system, or the age that you're referring to. Uh, Sifu, uh, Al, and, and, and Sifu Sunny, it's very complex. And the reason why I say it's complex is when you cross over from being a practitioner, we're always practitioner, and I'm putting the question to me as a multi-school owner who's been in uh, the forefront, so to speak, for the past 26, 27 years owning uh, my own martial arts schools is I have a lot of students that have been with me from day one for 27 years. And the question always arises, what do you do with someone who is younger, but has been coming three, four, five times a week, taking private lessons and gives his or her heart and soul to everything that's done, but doesn't sort of meet the age threshold. And it's a complex issue, right? Because you want these people to be rewarded on one hand. And on the other hand, you don't want to be seen as someone that is not respecting the black belt rank. So what I have done personally is created two different curriculums. And I've created a child curriculum and I've created an adult curriculum whereby the students that are under adult, 18 of age or younger, er, learn a different curriculum in the sense that it's much uh, smaller in material, uh, not as voluminous. And after several years of perfecting that curriculum, will be entitled to test for the junior black belt. And I call it a junior black belt or an under black belt. And it's not till age 18 that they can test for their adult black belt showdown first degree. So the compromise and the complexity that that question brings is not really that easy of an answer if someone's being truthful for you. But what I've done is to be able to create the adult curriculum, create the children's curriculum and reward those individually, separately. But when they reach the adult rank, they can then test for adult black belt. Hmm. Okay. What about you, Bobby? Well, you know what? Being in, being in the arts as long as I, I sat when I was nine years old, so I've seen the, the kid trend. I'm 60, and I've been very fortunate enough to teach a lot of quality, quality young men and women through the years. Black belt is life. And if you haven't experienced life, how can you experience a black belt? So it, it's a balance. It's a fine balance. And Soki Paul and I have talked about this numerous times, about how we balance those two lines. And that's how we do the, the junior, the kids ranking system versus an adult ranking system. And it's important because a lot of these kids, I'll tell you, 
I go to many tournaments and many seminars. You ask them a simple question. Oh, you're a Kempo guy. Can you tell me a little about your Kaiser Kempo? Can you tell me a little about your history? Yeah, it's good. It's cool. I'm like, that's it? Okay. <laughs> and, then I, and then I know right then and there. Eh, I just turn out, walk by, and I shake my head. None of our students, and I and I could I could swear on a stack of Bibles to this, none of Sophie Paul's students or, or our students now, and I have my sublet stu students, they know their history, they know their legacy, they know everything. They their techniques are pristine, and we, we make sure of it because we don't want to be that school. We don't want to be that one that's not carrying the legacy for the forefathers, yourself included, where where that you look at us with a raised eyebrow. So we support that legacy and the traditions and the histories of the Don Rank. And and I and I hold that close to my heart as well. I I, I have I've had students of mine have lasted for years. And I said, listen, you need to do this, 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 this. You need to, you know, be at the proper age. We try to balance the age thing as much as possible. But again, again, time time has changed things. A little bit, but we need to call an eye. A little bit, a whole lot of bit. <laughs> yeah, we need. I mean, I I know what you're saying. I've gone to tournaments. I see these seven year olds. I remember I was in an organization. I won't mention the name, but there was a seven, eight year old girl, the youngest black belt in America. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And it was great because for a marketing tool, yeah, that school got a gazillion little kids in their school now. So. Business-wise, they were flourishing, but when it came down to the leg legacy and the traditions and the history, it's like I'm shaking my head, going ay ay ay. So there, there is a right. balance. There is a yin, there is a yin and yang to that. Um, and and I and I agree with both of you, gentlemen, the same way. Um, we we both Paul and I have decided to to do that parallel chain, and it's worked very well with us so far. You know what is pretty interesting is just that. Um, we go back into the 1960s, getting into the 70s, 80s. Of course, I can remember that far back. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I'm, I'm 60. What, going oh, back sorry. into this, it's just that, yeah, I could understand certain things, but we have to, I'm going to categorize, put it into two different sections because then we have the, the grappling arts, you know, in judo, jujitsu. Yeah, we had younger people high ranking then but when it became the striking arts such as Kempo, karate or even uh, Kaju Kempo especially in the Kaju Kempo system we had nobody that was a rank black belt under 16 years old. We stayed that way for a long time. Matter of fact, even if we got a black belt, it was nobody had what they call a first degree, second degree, third degree. It was just a senior black belt or a junior black belt and you knew from the the, the chain of command who had the most time on it. It wasn't, as I recall, within the Kaju Kembo system, it wasn't until the early 1960s that the ranks started to come in. Because at that time, I had my school in San Leandro, California in 1966. And to be a third degree black belt, we, we didn't have that. We was just called senior black belts. But when Amparo started to say, okay, because of all the other systems, we are now going to be putting ranks. When we said third degree or fourth degree or fifth degree, wow, third degree was, wow, you worked so hard for it. And then fifth degree was the top of the line. Nobody could touch you. And all of a sudden I see ninth, 10th and 12th degree black belts. And I'm going, where's the value? The value is gone. The yeah. value is gone. You know? So my thing is just that when you have a younger person under 60 and say like 12 year old getting a black belt, you know that the sense of maturity really don't mature until between the age of 18 and 21. This is why you have 21. So how can a person know this? Okay, it's a learning stage. Maybe this is what the, the rank first don, second don, third don, and you realize that first don means first man, second man, third man. Maybe when they got the word don, first don, well, okay, maybe 17 years old, but I cannot see a 17-year-old being a fifth degree or third degree because 
according to what I believe, the maturity. He might have physical strength. He might have all that. But here, can he be able to use, you know, the ethical and moral complications that go along with his physical ability? That's my take on it. Now, I know <laughs> this video might be touchy on some other systems, especially when I see it in, in, in uh, other systems that all of a sudden you see this. Well, I've seen grandmasters at, what, 24 years old? And I'm thinking, well, what is a grand? And you know what? My own opinion doesn't matter because I, I'm, well, maybe it does. But I think, Bobby, you've also heard me say that I don't like the title of grandmaster because grandmaster means master I can understand. Grandmaster is like, you know, you reach the very top. Now, they can call me grandmaster when I'm six feet under because I have nothing more to learn. But as long as I am learning, I am still a practitioner. And this is why I go preferably by the word sifu, which is teacher or some of this accumulating knowledge. As far as people out of respect, yeah, we'll, we'll call them grandmasters and masters. But inside of you, there's an external and internal part, the external and internal, the character and the personality. The personality is the grandmaster, the character is the Sifu. That makes sense? <laughs> well, that's just my opinion, you know? Um, the opinion is 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 worth is makes a hundred percent sense. And anybody that would give a fifth degree black belt of any sort to someone that's 16, 17, or 18 years old, absolutely, in my opinion, devalues um, exactly what you spoke about. And um, the black belt rank has to be revered in all aspects. And age is definitely a factor, as you had mentioned, Sifu. Uh, times have changed in the sense that, you know, the, there's more and more children getting involved at three and a half, four years old, that making this their life passion, which is, which is great. That's what we're here to do, both Bobby and I and the rest of the team. We want to spread the benefits of martial arts to as many people as we possibly, possibly can, but in the right way, in the spiritual way, in the way that comes from the heart, the passion, in the realization that, as you know, we talk about yin and yang, is that there's the physical, physical part, but there's also the tools that we learn by having our brains be developed at a certain age. Because I just, I just taught a lesson to a 32-year-old uh, student of mine that has been with me for 27 years. And I said to him, you know, I'm here right now to navigate you, to take the tools that we're learning together and take it to the outside world, whether that be in your personal life, whether that be in your work life, whether that be in your personal friendship life, however it is, because that's what martial arts is meant to do. And that I'm a white belt, just like you are a white belt, I said to the student, because we're learning every single day day. So I agree with you 150%. I know uh, Bobby uh, agrees with you. And, um, you know, the black belt needs to be revered and respected for what it is. You know, for some of the guys that coming up, just a word of advice. Um, you're getting to be, you know, from white belt all the way up maybe to black belt. Some people call themselves black belts when they're not really in there, there yet. I would suggest, because to me, it's like they're coming across like fake it until you make it, you know, that's not really good. The best word I like to use is that, why don't you say that you're black belt in training? It makes a lot more sense because this is where you're training for instead of your fake it to make it deal. I just had to put that in because they came across many, many years ago. You know, I, when I, I hear people saying that, yeah, um, um, yeah I'm, a, I'm a black belt, but I don't know the materials yet. Well, then, OK, then you are black belt in training. Don't fake it because everybody's going to yeah, so much fake news going on around nowadays. You don't even know what is real anymore. You know, so, yeah. you know, I guys, we really had a great time talking about this in the end. I'm sure that we could go on forever and. Maybe we're going to have you folks back on again. Oh, we'd love maybe, to. Maybe 
any time before or after the event, and maybe we can talk more about the event. But it's time for us to say, hey, I thank you guys very much for, for joining us and giving, giving us giving us your opinion. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that's going to want to know what you guys say anyway, and we're just going to push it out. Sana, you have any last words to say? Yes, Sifu. Again, just a reminder, thank you very much for joining in on this podcast. And at the same time, if you guys haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe so that this way you can get more information like this. Great opinions. And at it's all about learning. It's all about enhancing what you already know. It's not taking away from you, but rather enhancing what you already know. Like Sifu Al said, always, always be a black belt in training. Even if you are a black belt like myself, I'm always still considering myself as a black belt training. Also, one thing I've always remembered is that one way that Sifu Al has always explained it to me was when it comes down to it, you're a good beginner, but I'm an excellent beginning, stating that he's always still learning as a black belt. Okay, so always keep learning, always enhance from other people's knowledge. So again, thank you very much, Sifu Al. The last words are for you. I, I want to have Paul and Bobby, you guys get any last words you guys want to say? I just want to say personally, thank you so much, Sifu Al, Sifu Sunny. This has been an absolute honor to be able to share views with you both in the martial arts to strengthen the character and integrity of what we do each and every day. I hope, and we can speak more, that you both will be able to uh, attend the event in March and that we're able to contribute in some way to you both with this program. I am honored and I cannot thank you enough. I appreciate it. Bobby? I, I echo, I reflect the sentiments of Paul as well. It's been an honor and a privilege, Sifu Al. I mean, we talk all the time and I, I, I am like, blessed and humbled every day that I get a chance to talk to you and Sifu Sunny. It's, it's an honor and ple pleasure to meet you as well, sir. Um, anything we can do for you, we are just a phone call away. Heole makajiki ho. Mahalo. We love you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. All right. Hey, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aloha. And have a great weekend. Thank you, you sir. Well. Enjoy. Enjoy.